Uh, we'll start first with uh, Aaron Ladd from KSHB. Go ahead, Aaron. Frank, how's it going? Doing well, man. How you doing? Doing all right. I'm thinking this has got to be one of the most interesting off seasons for you as far as how the season ended, losing in the Super Bowl, and then you digest all the media this off season leading up to, to when we get you now. What has the off season been like? Man, just extreme focus. You know, uh, you got to digest everything, you know, and be able to come back, at, you know, with a clear mindset, going to each year with a clear mindset, um, you know, basically, you know, it's hard to wash up, out that, that that taste of losing the Super Bowl, but, you know, that's why you have the offseason. So you can come back, you know, go recuperate and come back, you know, with a fresh mindset going into training camp. Let's go next to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Hey, Frank. Chiefs added Jaron Reed in the offseason. That was when you had your best year of your career in 2018 with the Seahawks. Uh, what do you think it was about the partnership of, of you two that made you guys so successful for that year? Um, Jaron, he's a great player. Um, you know, they, they, they do a hell of a job developing those players up there at Alabama. And, um, you know, ever since he had came in the league when I was in Seattle, you know, me and him, you know, instantly bonded um, on and off the field. And I think that plays a big role. You know, when you got a guy you can trust off the field, you got a guy you can trust, you know, um, it'll be easier for you to trust him on the field. Um, you know, just being able to compliment each other on each other's game, um, you know, and play off of each other well, I think those are things that helped us, you know, be successful when we um, play together. Let's go next to Sam McDowell. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Frank. What's up, man? How you doing, um, Sam? Good. Uh, I'm wondering now that, it, that you've been so far removed from it, if you can kind of just reflect on what you thought of the last year and how it went for you personally, and then just how you're sort of turning the page to this year and your expectations for yourself. I'm a man. Just, uh, you know, fulfilling my goals. Um, I didn't hit my goals last year. Well, I hit some of them. I didn't hit all of them. Um, one of them being one of my sack numbers and stuff like that. But, you know, like I said, you got to be able to wash your mind up. You know, it's a long year. It's been a long two years for us personally. And, um, you know, I just look forward to getting back out there, and um, you know, when the season starts and, you know, doing what I love to do, you know, rushing the passer and stopping the run. Let's go next to Sarin Petro. Go, Sarin. Uh, Frank, I know in, in some ways it's just an accounting number, but, you know, cap hits are, are a reality for putting together an entire roster. And there's been a number of different stories I've been written that point out that you've got the biggest cap hit for a player that's not a quarterback. Is that a, a pressure? Is that something you weigh on your shoulders? Is that something you think about that maybe drives you or, or you know, what reaction do you have to hearing that number? Yeah, um, you know, it's more thing that drives me, though, you know, than the cap number and stuff like that, though, you know, I got – you know, teammates, you know, who, uh, who got my back. I got, you know, a coaching staff who got my back. So um, I think that's what matters the most, you know, um, and everything is in-house. So, you know, um, I don't really look at everything outside of, you know, my team and, you know, what's going on in the NFL and stuff like that. I just honestly show up to work and do the best that I can every day. Let's go next to Matt Derrick. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Frank, good to see you. Um, How you doing, Matt? Hey, Doing well, thanks. Yeah, Coach Coach Bags has talked about you and and Chris playing with Chris playing more on the edge on the opposite side of you. Um, you guys have obviously done that a little bit in the past, but what is it with, with you on one side and you think Chris on the other, and you guys sharing that edge spot that you think you know gives you guys an advantage when you two are in those in those positions? Man, I think it kind of opens up the game more. Honestly, um, you find a lot a lot of times you know we made it easier on teams to make adjustments and stuff last year when me and Chris lined up on the same side. And, um, I mean, that's due to the position. You know, it's only so much you can you can help when, you know, you got one guy playing three tech and you got another guy playing the end. But, um, you know, Chris going to the end position, it just opens up the game much more. You know, it's, it, you know, it makes it harder. You know, now they got to pick a size, you know, whether we're going to slide right or we're going to slide left. You know, we just know now it's, you know, it's a higher chance that we're going to be able to get, you know, better looks and stuff like that from the offense. Looks like we got four more. We'll go right down the line, starting with Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Good to see you, Frank. I want to ask you about uh, two guys on your D-line. Obviously, the rookie, Josh, just what are your early impressions of him? And another year with Taco, seeing what he did before he got injured last year, uh, where do you see where he can go in year two with you guys? Man, um, you know, for Taco, the sky's the limit. Um, still a young guy, you know, um, going into year five. 
and just, um, you know, just having fun. You know, uh, it's going to be important for him and imperative for him to get all the way healthy so that, you know, he can have a great camp and, you know, leading into the season. You know, when guys have injuries like that, you know, um, you know, the main thing is just coming back, being able to bounce back and have the confidence and the trust in themselves to do what they love to do. And, um, you know, rookie, he's doing a great job, you know, in, in his learning. He's very smart. Um, phys physically, you know, he's blessed and gifted. Um I think he's 6'6", six, six, you know, like 250. Um, just physically, he's gifted and blessed. And, you know, I look forward to seeing what he's going to do, and, man, and what he can do to help his team. Let's go next to Todd Lebo. Go ahead, Todd. Hey, Frank. I just noticed you haven't been uh, very active on Twitter since the Super Bowl. You've been keeping a low profile. What kind of things you've been doing off the field besides, you know, working on getting ready for the season? Man, just working. Just working on – Honestly, I haven't been on Twitter in so long. I don't even remember my Twitter password and stuff like that. You know, but I'm fine with our social media. I haven't, I mean, social media has always been like a thing, you know, that I don't really need. You know what I mean? This has been something that's always been entertainment just for my fans, you know, my way of interacting with fans and stuff like that. You know, I've taken I've taken initiative this, this past all season just to focus more, you know, on myself and you know, fine-tuning my game and getting it back to form. Um last few years, you know, dealing with injuries, dealing with a lot of personal stuff like that. You know, um, it takes a wear on you. You know, sometimes you got to take that break, that mental break, so you can get back to it. And, um, you know, put football back first. And that was my goal. And that is my goal. Last two. We'll go Adam and then Matt. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Frank, how you doing today? I'm doing good, Adam. How are you? I see the shades. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, um, you talked a minute ago about your, your goals for last year, sack numbers, that kind of stuff. You got some. You didn't get some. What were those goals, if you don't mind going into those? And what are your goals for this season? I mean, it's always to get 10 plus, you know, um, that's always my goal. You know, you get 15, that's even better. You know, you get 20, you're in a whole different league. You're talking, you know, defensive MVP talks. But, you know, my goal, my, I always set them high. You know what I mean? If I'm if I'm not looking at myself and competing with, you know, these quarterbacks at the NFL and chasing MVP numbers and competing with Aaron Donald, you know, as a reigning MVP, defensive MVP, you know, I'd be a fool. But um, I just got to, I got to set my standards high, you know, so that if I do fall short, you know, I'm not disappointed. And um, I feel like that's my ultimate goal. We'll go last to Matt McMullen. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Frank. Uh, I know it's day one of minicamp, long way to go here. But uh, looking at the talent in your room along the defensive line, yourself, Chris, adding Jaron and the young guys in your room as well, what are your expectations for what this pass rush can achieve in 2021? Man, uh, I feel like we're going to have a lot of fun out there. Um, you got a lot of young guys that's willing to step up. Um, some guys you didn't even name. You got, you know, Colin Saunders. You got, um, man, it's, and it's a lot of young talent. Um, I feel like over the first few years we had, a, 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 you know, it wasn't, we was new. We didn't really know each other. You know, it was, it was one of those type of things we was playing. But um, I feel like at this point of our, of, you know, going into year three, basically with our foundation kind of being set now, you know, with um, us, you know, basically knowing the, the layout of our defense, um, knowing where each person is going to be, knowing how each person plays. I feel like that all plays into our uh, favor, honestly. Frank, we appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate y'all. See you guys soon. All right. All right, guys, we'll have uh, Travis Kelsey or uh, Larry coming up next. Hang tight. All right, guys, we got Travis Kelsey coming up to the podium next. Hey, Trav, you hear us okay? I hear everybody, yep. 
Oh, well, uh, we'll get started and we'll start first with Herbie Tiope. Go ahead, Herbie. Hey, Travis, good to see you as always, man. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? Hey, I'm well, thanks. You've now had a, a few days of OTAs and now the first day of mini camp to work with Noah Gray. And I'm curious what your first uh, first overall impressions with the guy uh, as he's acclimating to the scheme. Well, uh, one of coaches, Coach Reed's big things is uh, bring energy, man, and show your personality. And so far, he's done both. It's uh, It's been a lot of fun so far. 8-3, uh, he's got a very um, unique way of of understanding football. He, he, he's years ahead of, uh, you know, being a rookie, which is uh, which is awesome. You know, you, you can kind of give him pointers and, um, you know, he's taking he's running with everything. Uh, he's absorbing all the information that the coaches are giving him that he's hearing from other players. And uh, he's having a lot of success out there on the field. He's going to he's going to definitely help us this year. Let's go next to Mick Schaefer. Go ahead, Mick. Sorry, it's actually McKenzie. Um, hey, Travis, I just wanted to ask you, um, I interviewed Kanaya about the shoe she designed, <laughs> and it was so exciting to just see how excited she was and talk about that experience with her. What's that like for you to just, I mean, you're, you're making their day. You're, I mean, this is just an opportunity, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that she could not stop talking about. Oh, man, it's uh, first, I'm just very fortunate that I was in the position that I'm in. Um, both as an athlete and as an influence, uh, influence in the community. Um, it's just a reason, another reason why I love this, this area, this city, the, the Chiefs Kingdom. Uh, and every day around Kanaya is, is awesome, man. She's, just, she's, she's so uh, heartfelt, very genuine, uh, just appreciative of everything she's, that's come her way. And it couldn't have, Nike couldn't have picked a better you know, young lady to, to create a shoe and um, to help me kind of uh, push the, uh, the, the, the trailblazer that, that we did. And, um, you know, I'm just uh, very thankful that she was so fun and she was so uh, happy to just be a part of it. And um, yeah, shout out to Kanaya. Let's go next to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Hey, Travis, uh, a long time ago now, but I believe it was 14. You were the tight end behind Anthony Fasano. What do you remember about that time? And now that the Chiefs, I think for the second time in your tenure, have drafted a tight end, what can you take from that time and, and kind of pass it along from Noah to Noah Gray? Um, <clears throat> just the confidence of the game. I think that's the biggest thing that uh, Fasano gave me was that, um, you know, if you put the work in, if you, if you understand the game mentally, uh, you can play so much faster. And uh, I think Noah has a great understanding of, of, the, of the game. He has a good understanding of what defenses are being presented in front of him. And that's half the battle, man, knowing what the other side of the ball is doing. So you have an idea of what you should be doing. And, um, yeah, he's, he's hit the ground running ever since we started. Let's go next to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Travis. Um, earlier in your career with the Chiefs, you guys played a lot of uh, multiple tight end formations, maybe got away from that a little bit and certainly looks like particularly judging from what we saw today, you guys are going to be doing a lot of that again. What are the advantages from your vantage, um, from your viewpoint to multiple tight end formations? And Brad, I'll have a uh, follow-up as well. Well, Adam, I think the biggest, the biggest thing is uh, just the mismatches. You know, it, it presents a different uh, set of formations and a different set of rules for the defense uh, to, to be more gap sound on the, in the run game, but at the same time have an idea of uh, more play action stuff. Um, and then it puts uh, it puts the, you know, for the most part, they bring in more more linebackers or a bigger bigger guy because we're bringing in bigger guys, right? So they try and match the personnel, which can also kind of play in our advantage because we got guys that can run routes uh, in both. I mean, every everywhere in the in the tight end room. So it's just um, you know, trying to trying to take care take advantage of of those mismatches and uh, and just be be accountable for the team. You know, anything that that Coach Reed can imagine. You know, we want to be able to to give him that option to call. Okay. And um, you said uh, recently in an interview, you talked about the, the Chiefs and the Browns, and you said maybe they're neck and neck, the two teams for uh, uh, best in the AFC. Um, can you elaborate on that, what you think about the Browns? I mean, you just throwing some love to your hometown, or uh, or what is it about the Browns you really think is, uh, is, is, uh, is all that? Well, I mean, we, we, I grew up li uh, living in the uh, any given Sunday world, man. Any team can beat you, right? I mean, I remember, uh, I think it was 2015 or 14. I forget which year it was, but the Raiders were, they hadn't had a win on their, on their schedule. Or they hadn't had a win on their, in their season yet. And we went into Oakland on a Thursday night and, and took an L to a team that had, that was winless. And um, I'm not saying that they're the Raiders by any means. I just think that, you know, the Browns have done a, a great job of, you know, getting that uh, organization back to, you know, 
a very respectable, very, you know, competitive team. And um, with that, I mean, you got to take every, you got to respect everybody. You just got to, got to give everybody your best shot. And um, I, we're definitely not taking the Browns light. That's for sure. It's a Sam Mellinger. Good, Sam. Hey, uh, Travis, this is kind of related to what Adam just asked you about actually, but um, I know the answer is supposed to be like one day at a time and all that, but um, you look around the league. Um, who do you see as sort of the biggest competitor, rival, or threat um, in the AFC to get back to the Super Bowl? I mean, we got we got three really good teams in the division. I'm not, I'm not going to look past anybody in our division. Um, if you look at the entire AFC, um, outside of the the Raiders, Broncos, and Chargers, um, I mean, obviously the Browns, the the Ravens, uh, the Titans just got another huge piece to their offense that could that's that's very interesting. Um, and, and who knows who's going to show up? I mean, there's a lot of good young teams like a Miami. Um, and, and it's just, you know, you got to be ready. You got to be ready for it all. You can't forget about the Bills. I mean, there's teams all over the place that can come up and, and get a win. And you just got to respect them all and, and, uh, and go to work every single week. We've got four left. We'll go right down the line, starting with Aaron. Go ahead, Aaron. Hey, appreciate the time here today, Travis. Uh, a lot of noise around Le'Veon Bell and what he had to say on the way out. I'm curious if you're surprised to hear that from a guy that's been inside that locker room, and maybe if you, you listen to that in relation to your experience. Um, yeah, I was surprised. I think that uh, I think Le'Veon, when he came here, was a very hard worker. He's a pro's pro. I mean, he was working his tail off in practice. Um, I think there was a little bit of, uh, of, of his body. His, his, he was a little banged up there towards the end of the season. And uh, I'm a guy who I was I was excited when we got him. I, I was hoping that he was going to be able to help us out a lot. And it's just, you know, you never like to see things like that, especially when I think so highly of a guy like uh, like Le'Veon and like Coach Reed. So it's just, um, I don't know, it's just unfortunate. But I don't talk about other guys' situations. I don't know what happened between them. And, um, you know, I, I just appreciate Le'Veon coming in and working as hard as he did. Because I know it was, it was a unique and different situation that he was in, man. Let's go to Darren Smith. Go ahead, Darren. Hey, Travis, hope you're doing well. Um, I'm curious, and I have two questions for you. One, how does the mindset and how does the mentality change from the first year when you all missed out on going to the Super Bowl to the next year winning the Super Bowl, and then the year after you lose the Super Bowl? What's the mindset and, and, and the work ethic in coming back the following season like that and then have a follow-up after that? Um, I think right now everybody's more motivated now than – than we were uh, before we won a Super Bowl. You know, our, our, I think everybody's still got a bad taste in our mouth on how we finished the season last year. Um, and it's just, you know, that's fueling the fire. We got a lot of guys flying around right now, uh, excited to come to practice, excited to go to work, and, uh, and excited to try and get this thing rolling the, in the right direction early and keep it in that direction. But I think uh, for the most part, the mentality has always been the same, man. We're going to come, we're gonna go into this season trying to win every single football game uh, whether home or away. And, uh, and with that mentality, man, the sky's the limit, man. We'll let the, we'll let everything else, everything else play out how it goes. Second question, obviously last year you were in the mix, I guess, in the design of the Super Bowl ring. Have they come to you about the ASU championship ring or what, or you have any input on that or what? Um, I only want to see rings that I win. I don't want to see the rings that I lose, man. So I'll just leave it at that. We'll go last to Seren Petro. Go ahead, Seren. Uh, Travis, I know last year was the the run it back tour, and virtually every single player, at least you know on the on the core, was was back for the team. This year, there's you know more of a normal NFL season. There's more turnover, especially along the offensive line. Even the receivers, Sammy moving on. Uh, does that? I, I know the mindset and the focus, and, and you guys that have been around for all these years that. You know, it's it's the next step for all you guys. But for new guys, whether it's rookies or guys coming from other teams, is that maybe an injection, fresh blood, maybe guys that don't have that that Super Bowl ring that you know a lot of you guys do? Does that added maybe some energy to the room, or or is it something you gotta you gotta drag them and and bring them up to speed and get them up to your level? How does that dynamic work? I think uh, the Brett Veach and the coaches and the and the front office did a great job of bringing in guys that were ready to work. Um, I mean, they brought in championship level guys, guys that have been in the playoffs, guys that have been in Super Bowls, um, guys that are just, you know, pros. And that's the that's the biggest thing is, is to be able to have a culture like Coach Reed is, has, has kind of laid the foundation here. Um, and the leaders in this in this building have laid the foundation. It makes it easy for guys that are that are professionals that, that actually want to go to work and want to win 
and it means something to them to come in and, and find that that culture and, and appreciate it and, and, and add to it. Um, and that's the bit that's that's something that I've always loved about Coach Reed. I mean, being here nine years now, uh, you see a lot of guys come and go, you know, a lot of guys that, you know, you wish we never we you wish we could have never let go. Um, and, you know, it's just uh, that's the business of the NFL. So you just got to be able to every single year kind of reboot that 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 uh, entire chemistry, the entire team. Uh, every year is a new year, you know, no matter who's in the building, no matter who you got. You got to be able to create that that new team with uh, with the guys that are in the building. Travis, appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. Have a good one, guys. All right, guys. We got uh, Larry coming up next.
All right, guys, we've got LDT stepping up. There you are. Can you hear us okay? Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, if you're ready to get started, we'll start first with Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Hey, Larry. Welcome back. Good to talk to you again. I was curious what you're working through now as far as the, the greatest obstacle to get back in the mix after taking so much time off. Uh, you know, like uh, back home in Montreal, the gym have been closed for the past years. Uh, I was able to stay in a pretty good shape, but I think uh, when it comes to football shape, uh, there's no other treatment than just playing football. So I'm here. Uh, today was a great day, great start, um, and I'm looking forward to more practices. I think that's the key is to get exposure, get some reps. Let's go next to Aaron Ladd. Go ahead, Aaron. Hey, glad to have you back. I'm wondering with your perspective as a, as a pro football player who stepped away, was helping out on the front lines, if you have a message at all about vaccinations and their availability, some players have used their platform here to, to use a message. I'm wondering if you have one. Yeah, I mean, if you ask me, of course, with my medical knowledge and background, uh, I, I think vaccination is a great thing. I think, I think it's what's going to get us through this pandemic. Um, but I think it's also a personal choice. Like, you cannot judge people. I think it's a, it's important to have a conversation. And, and you know, I, I believe that we have the greatest protocol here in the NFL uh, with, with the testing, the mask, and so on. And whether you decide to get vaccinated or not, uh, we're going to be able to protect the players. And that's what matters at the end of the day. Let's go next to Todd Lebo. Go, Todd. Larry, what was I, I saw you on several like national stories and things like that. But we haven't really had a chance to talk to you. Can you kind of encapsulate what it was like last year to do what you were doing? And were you able to, on Sundays, watch Chiefs games? What, how did you kind of work through that or were you on call then working how, how did that go uh i mean <laughs> it's been a pretty challenging year i think for all of us uh, for me personally like you know i, I went back and help in long-term care facility uh in different capacity like sometime i was a nurse sometime i was a northerly a, a resident like I, I was basically helping where help was needed and uh it, it was tough. Like we lost a lot of patient and we know that long-term care facility were pretty badly affected. Uh, but uh, I think at the end of the day, like, you know, looking back at this year, uh, being able to watch the Chiefs on Sunday, that was kind of the thing that was uh, keep me, keeping me grounded, you know, and I, it, it was, it was fun. It was fun to watch my teammates, fun to uh, stay in touch with them as well throughout the season, even though I wasn't there. Uh, I don't regret my decision. I think I, I was in the right place at the right moment and I was able to put my medical training to use uh, but, but for sure, like watching game on Sunday, uh, couldn't be proud of, of the guys. And also like on Mondays, uh, going to work in long-term care facility, going from patient's room to patient's room and, uh, and watching, uh, the, the, the replays from the game <laughs> with your scrub, your visor and your, your gown. That was, uh, that was pretty cool. You know, the, the patient were also behind the chiefs. It was a chief's kingdom, uh, South, South shore of Montreal. Let's go next to Sam Mellinger. Go ahead, Sam. Larry, um, I, I hear you say just then that you you don't regret the decision. I think we all um, can understand why. But I'm curious, did did you miss football? I don't mean this in that old tired like does he love football thing enough. But um, did you feel like you had a foot in both worlds at all? Or did you feel completely detached from this and and into um, what you were doing? I mean, <laughs> football is in your DNA. Like <laughs> I remember, like throughout November, December, as, and as we were heading to the playoff, like sometime on Thursday, I would wake up and be like, okay, is it a, is it a, you know, a shell practice? Is it a full speed practice? Like I, I kept asking myself those questions because I miss football. Yeah, of course. Like you want to play football. That's, that's why I trained so hard. And you know, the last time I put a helmet on before today was at the Super Bowl in Miami and we won it. So there, there's a good, great memories uh, from, from playing football with these guys. And, and, uh, and I want to build, you know, that chemistry back and, and hopefully get a starting job in order to contribute to the team this year. Let's go next to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Laurent. Uh, welcome back. Um, wanted to ask you what you thought the last year has done for you in a football sense. Uh, do you feel, or is there any concern on your part that maybe um, you're not going to be the same player you were before you left? Or, or maybe has the year away from football maybe uh, saved a year of wear and tear and can extend your career? How do you feel about all that? Uh, a little bit of both, to be honest. Uh, and I think we'll see throughout the, the next couple of weeks and as we're heading into training camp how I really feel. Uh, so far, I feel great. You know, and like you said, being away from the game for a year, of, of course, you get rusty a little bit. Uh, but at the same time, I've never, you know, benched clean and squat as much as I did throughout the past year. So I feel in great shape and hopefully it's going to be able to translate on the field this year. Let's go next to Mackenzie Nelson. Go ahead, Mackenzie. 
Larry, I was just curious what your thoughts are on how sports at all levels, not just professional, but college and high school handled, um, you know, navigating the pandemic and practicing and playing, just overall getting some of these seasons in after having them taken away a year before. Um, just what are your thoughts on that? Well, you know what? Um, me opting out was never to say that we shouldn't be playing sport uh, in 2020. I, I feel like through the pandemic, through like a ton of things that divided people, sport is probably one of the last thing that brought people together. So no, I think um, uh, I think everybody did everything they can in order to make sport happen. And, and I think it was great for people, like people, the fans needed it. Everybody went through like ups and downs throughout 2020. And to be able to like watch the Chiefs, watch your team uh, perform at a high level, even though there's a pandemic going on, I think it's a, it's a great thing. It's like the connective tissue uh, of our society. Go next to Sam McDowell. Go ahead, Sam. And Brad, I'll have a follow-up to this as well. Um, Larry, the first thing I wanted to ask is you mentioned that the gyms were closed. What were you doing specifically to keep yourself in shape? I mean, you can watch on my Instagram, but <laughs> I, uh, I built a little gym on my balcony uh, and I worked out outside uh, because that's all I was allowed to do uh, through quarantine and curfew and so on for the last year. Uh, I had a pretty good setup. Uh, don't get me wrong, it was cold, uh, but I had some uh, heaters on the side and so on. And I basically trained like four times a week for the past uh, year. So I feel in pretty good shape. And the second thing I wanted to ask is you, you got, I, I would assume, a better taste of the field you want to get into post NFL than probably ever before. Did it reinforce that that's what you want to do or, or give you any second guesses about it? I think it reinforced the fact that for me, my calling is promoting health, you know, and whether it's with medicine or public health or other platform, that's what, I, what I'm going to be doing post-career and even during my career. Uh, and I started also a master's degree at Harvard in public health throughout the offseason uh, because I, I think as a professional athlete, you almost have that duty to get involved, you know, to promote something that you believe in. And for me, using the NFL platform and Tribune that I'm so privileged to have to promote something bigger than just one-on-one -on -one interaction with patient, I think it's going to, it's something that I want to um, look at, you know. We'll take five more. We'll go right down the line, starting with Nate. Go ahead, Nate. Larry, good to see you. I have a, a two-part question for you. Um, what in the last year did you want to sort of prove to yourself in terms of your return on the field and what you can do that maybe you wouldn't have had given the year off? And then secondly, um, just what's it like to be in the offensive line room now, given that Mitch, Eric aren't there anymore, and you have a lot of new guys, obviously Creed, Joe, Orlando Brown, to name a few. Just just what's it been like to 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 know what you can get better at with a year off and obviously uh, being in a new – within a new core? I, I don't mean to cut you off, but my English is a little bit rusty because I spoke French for the last year. Can you just say that one, that first question one more time? <laughs> no, you're, you're totally fine, man. It's – um. Just what do you feel like you know you can get better at in your return and then obviously oh. getting into a new offensive line room? I mean, you can get better at everything, you know, and I feel like 2020 was a was a good year, like 19 actually and leading up to the Super Bowl was a good year, but you can always improve. So that's uh, that's when, what I'm looking at. Like, I feel like I'm in great shape. I want to use that to my advantage. And then it's just making sure that I didn't lose any of the IQ football stuff and, you know, the speed of the game and so on. So uh, for me, watching film is going to be big this year, uh, just making sure that I can anticipate and also playing with my teammates. Like, and it's kind of leading up into your second question. Um, it's a new group out there, but it's crazy how they welcome me today. And, and I really I really love that. I, I feel like we're going to have a great group of guys. Uh, and, you know, I, I know Wiley, I know uh, Nick Allegretti, but everybody else is new. Uh, but they're just they're just awesome dudes. So I'm pretty excited to be here, honestly. Go next to Matt Derrick. Go ahead, Matt. Bonjour, Laurent. That's <laughs> not the best my best my French accent can do. Um, yeah, I was basically want I wanted to go back to Super Bowl Sunday and how you spent that day as far as watching the game, absorbing it all, um, seeing your teammates in that game, but then also specifically seeing the the challenges that the offensive line had with all of the injuries and what was kind of going through your mind. I mean, it, it was tough. It was tough because, you know, I know the guys. I know how, how hard they work in order to get there. So I remember I was working on Saturday at the long-term care facility. It took uh, Sunday off. Um, we had a curfew, so I watched it by myself. And, uh, and, and it, it, was, it was tough because, if you, of course, you want your guys to win. And like I said earlier, like, they work so hard in order to get to that point. And, you know, we know that injury happened. Um, 
but but I think it's just important to have good depth. And I think coaches and scout this year work so hard to build together an O line where everybody can play and everybody or most people had played in the past. So we we have a tremendous amount of depth this year, and I'm really excited to be able to contribute to this offense. Go next is Seren Petro. Go ahead, Seren. Uh, Lauren, I'm, I'm curious how much, uh, how many of your teammates, or me, maybe even other guys around the NFL, reached out to you? Uh, you know, I mean, it seems like that's kind of a unique situation. Like, I, and I probably, maybe I should have some doctor friends, but I don't. But if I had some guys that were doctors in the radio field, I, I, I sure would have called them. So, did you feel a lot of calls from guys around the league in your team? Absolutely. You know, and and before opting out, I called uh, Coach Reed and Coach Heck, and and they show their support from the from the get go. And, and it's one thing to show support one on one, but then to go into a press conference and tell the world basically that you're supporting your player's decision. Like for me, it really, it really meant a lot, you know, and then throughout the season, teammates reach out all the time, like Fish, Schwartz, Wiley, like, and it's, uh, it, it, it's great. Like it, it's, it's a good feeling because now I feel like I'm more welcome into the locker room um, because they show me their support throughout the year. So, uh, so yeah, now it's time to go back at it and play football. Last two, we'll go Karen and then Blair. Go ahead, Karen. Larry. Oh, hi. Dr. Darsh kept me informed of how you were doing. And I watched your Instagrams. Those uh, squats in the snow were pretty impressive out there. <laughs> but um, did you have a, like, feel a hunger for football that maybe you never knew you had before? A love that was deepened by being away from it for a year? Yeah, for sure. And, and, I think it's also like I realize how privileged I, I am to be able to perform in the, the biggest sport league in the world, you know, and to be away from it for a year made me realize that football doesn't last forever. So whenever you're still healthy, you got to work hard and make sure you can get back out there because that feeling of winning at Howard Stadium in front of 80,000 people is just nuts. And I want to be I want to make sure I'm still on the field to, to feel that. We'll go last to Blair Kirkhoff. Go Blair. Laurent, I just wanted to follow up on something you said earlier. Um, you picked up a master's or you're starting a master's program in public health at Harvard. Uh, yeah. Talk about that. Uh, I mean, it, it was always a field of interest for me to explore that because I feel like the, the more and more I, I'm getting a, a platform, especially in Canada, it's getting harder and harder to interact one-on-one -on -one with patients because sometimes I feel like patients know more about you than you know about them, you know? And, uh, and I feel like through public health, I can actually use that platform to promote health at a population level uh, through primary prevention and other action. And I think, I think that's really, I can really have an impact. And, and that's why I started that program. And then I was like, everything's going to be online this year because of COVID. So why not try to shoot for the moon and get into the best program in the world? And, uh, and I get admitted. So I'm pretty excited. Larry, we appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys. All right, guys, that is it for today. Uh, give me one second.